Hello everyone, welcome to my Session 6 Teaching Memo and Session 7 Introduction. It has been pretty hot up here in Poughkeepsie. Um, Dr. Laura and I uh, have been forced to walk outside uh, before sunset every night because of the heat. Uh, and we've been foregoing our garden duties because of the weather. But we're going to get back to it this week. We've worked out a schedule where we're going to go late in the afternoon, even though it's still hot then. But um, And uh, she's got me running in the morning. I'm getting ready for football season, uh, which uh, starts at the end of August. So getting in fighting shape. Um, let me talk a little bit about Session 6. There was no um, formal interaction this week so I can't comment on any misconceptions or um, good ideas uh, so um, I even got email from one of you asking me what's going on Dr. Tom what are we supposed to be doing other than this quiz so uh, anyway you sh there's a lot of things you can be doing you have an anchor activity uh, which is filling out your vocabulary in your own words um, that's a, an anchor activity, is a, a differentiation strategy where uh, when you're done with your other work uh, or when you have uh, nothing to do, uh, you, you work on that. So um, you should be working on your vocabulary in your own words. Every week uh, there's new vocabulary and in my presentation I usually give a definition. So take that definition and put it in your own words, but make sure it's accurate. I mean, I, I, I received... Uh, I rate emails from people who got vocabulary in your own words wrong because you told us to put it in our own words. I said, yeah, but it still has to be accurate. <laughs> you just can't make something up. Uh, so you should be doing that and working on your selected response test, uh, which uh, we go into uh, full force this week. Um, validity is an important topic in test construction. Uh, you, and you can see from Popham's Chapter 4 and Cohen and Spencer's Chapter 5 in my presentation, remember, if your test has validity, then it automatically is reliable. Uh, but that doesn't mean you, when you're making your test, you don't have to worry about the things that make a test unreliable. Um, uh, poor wording and uh, conditions, testing conditions and things like that. Um, um, so what I'm talking about and what most of you should be concerned about is content related validity. Um, the, the other types, um, you don't need to be con so concerned about those, but content related validity, you need to make sure your tests are assessing the mastery of your learning targets. Uh, so that's key and, and we're going to learn more about that as we correct, create our own selected response tests. Um, so. The other type of validity that you may encounter uh, in, if you change jobs or become a guidance counselor or are a preschool teacher um, is predictive validity. And um, many of you have had bad experiences with the SAT uh, and, and those kind of norm reference tests, the GREs, uh, which are allegedly supposed to predict uh, success in college or success in grad school. Um, re unfortunately, research has shown that uh, the SAT only, pr only predicts about 25% of a, a person's success in the first year only of college. So um, the rest has to do with college uh, or high school grade point average, high school grades, uh, school attendance, things like that. Um, so the SAT, 25%. Um, uh, but you would preschool teachers and kindergarten teachers will also use predictive validity in preschool screening or uh, uh, any kind of screening that is done, kindergarten screening or first grade screening, uh, to predict how a student's going to do in first grade or kindergarten. So uh, those are two, those, that's another kind of validity that you might encounter. Um, let's talk about session seven, this week's reading and presentation topic about absence of bias. Uh, if there are any of the three legs of the test creation triangle that are abused, it's bias. Um, you would, you'll hear people, people talking about how biased our tests are 
and they have no clue what really makes a test biased. And there's only two ways. And you are going to find out those two ways this week. So you will be able to talk about whether a high stakes test, a state assessment is truly biased or your own tests are biased. Uh, so um, you're going to learn about that. And uh, you're also going to be taking a true false test on that in this week's assignments. And I'll get into that a little later. Um, this week, you're also going to finish the first draft of your selective response test. As a reminder, the most difficulty my students have is creating learning targets. Also, they have a difficulty creating reasoning targets, but I'll get into that a little later as well. Um, they need to be specific and measurable. Um, please use the resources. and set. I have them in Session 6 and in Session 7 course materials. Please go in there. Um, let me let me just uh, go into um, the discussion board. You can see um, I'm going to go into coursework by week, and, and this is session seven. I won't go into session. Trust me, they are there. <laughs> um, I'm going to go into course uh, seven course materials, session seven course materials handouts. You'll see there's the EdTPA. Um, there's a hard copy of your uh, bias quiz. And I'll talk about that a little later. Um, resources for creating learning targets. That's what you should have been working on last week. How to write a learning objective. Verbs for behavioral objectives. Tips for writing behavioral objectives. So you have everything you need, yet many of you will not look at those. Many of you will write um, learning targets to say, understand task one. And that is not specific and measurable. Understanding will know uh, how do we do assessment uh, in task three? That is not a specific and measurable target. So make sure you get in there and look at those resources, please, please. Um, uh, also take note of the verbs. Don't avoid verbs. Appreciate, cover, realize, be aware of, familiarize, study, become acquainted with, gain knowledge of, quote unquote, understand. That's the one you will use most often, understand, comprehend, know, students will know how to um, learn. Okay, you, so avoid those verbs. So you know, you've been warned. Please don't let me see your, your tests that say have those words in them or I will yell at you. <laughs> uh, well, not really. Maybe I will, I don't know. Um, you're also gonna find formatting is a big hurdle to overcome, which can be minimized. Um, all these things can be minimized. If you watch my Creating the Selected Response Test video, you can find it in at least five places. I'm going to show you a couple of them now. All right. Um, you'll see um, it is in the assignment instructions. So I'm going to go into um, coursework by week. I'm going to go into uh, session seven uh, assignments. Okay. And you will see it in the assignment instructions. There it is. All right, that's one place. Um, in this week's presentation, I'm going to go into there. And there it is again. <laughs> uh, in the discussion boards, let me go into the discussion boards, all discussions. And the initial selected response, you can see that someone's already posted their initial response. There it is again. <laughs> all right, so just to, to talk about this first part, you're going to upload your selected response test as an attachment, please, as an attachment. I'm going to, and I'm going to show, I'll go into group four, and I think Catherine has already uploaded hers, and you'll see it's an attachment. So you right click on it and download it. So you will, you will upload it in your group. So this is Catherine's group, Catherine, Elizabeth, Iman, and Monique. You will post just like Catherine did here. You're going to post, uh, attach your um, you're going to hit reply, um, put your name here, okay? So um, say Mo I'm going to put Monique's name here, Monique, and then just attach your test. Um, click on the, the link, the um, paper clip, go to browse my computer, find your test, and then uh, upload it. So that's all you have to do for this session. For next week, you're... Uh, you're going to download your group's tests. You're going to take them and then upload them 
in the next discussion board. So please don't upload your tests, your your group mates test into this discussion board. It's go you're going to do it into this one, selected response, answers, and feedback. Um, and you'll do that next week. I, I will make it available right now, um, but you that's not due till next week. Um, so, uh, but I know there are some eager beavers out there so uh, that's what you'll do all right um, let me talk more about uh, creating the select response test the here are the steps you need to take one become familiar with the ed tpa two create four or five learning targets that are specific and measurable those are listed at the top of your test write 20 to 25 questions that align with your t targets um, many people will just write questions uh, not realizing that that's not what a test is supposed to do. Even a written response test, you need to have, these are my learning targets, these are the written response questions that will assess those targets. Um, once, and also remember that there are no extended response questions. Fill in the blanks, require one missing word. Um, don't say, give me five, three lines and ask a question that's Take, it's going to take three sentences to fill out. That, that's not acceptable. Um, once you complete your first draft, upload it, as I mentioned. Um, then you'll download and take the exams of your group mates. Do not upload your answers until next week's discussion board. Okay, I've already said that. It's very important that you watch my test creation video and you also that you read Chapaway at all. There are two chapters that you need to read in Chapaway at all. And... Um, I have them, um, this, this is chapter five. Um, this is uh, how to, uh, making the most of multiple choice questions. And then there is another, um, in uh, course materials, there's another called, is this a trick question? Uh, and you'll see that in handouts, actually it's in both, um, both sessions. And is this a trick question, which is um, it's 2001, it's 15 years old, but it's excellent for writing select, effective selective response questions. So here are exemplar tests. Now, these, none of these, I think, have reasoning questions in them. Um, and the reason is because I can't get my students to create reasoning questions or reasoning targets, even though in the rubric, Question type, there's an equal mix of reasoning and knowledge targets. Even though people lose credit, they don't care. They just make, how many videos do you have to upload? How long does the video have to be? Um, those are knowledge type questions. The only, um, I, I think if you have multiple choice questions, they all should be your reasoning questions. <laughs> um, I would recommend your matching questions be vocabulary. You know, one of your targets be um, candidates will be accurately defined, significant or important at TPA vocabulary, uh, and there is a lot of it. So um, those are my suggestions for, for doing it. Um, uh, and as I said, it's a good match for assessing knowledge and reasoning targets. Um, so, but most people only do knowledge targets, and I have... In, in Chapaway at all, um, I have um, there, I have given you this page number. I think it's page 139 in Chapter Five, and that, that's you can find that in course materials. Item formulas for selected patterns of reasoning makes inferences based on text, summarizes information in a text, compares and contrasts elements of text, makes generalizations based on information. You can do that, especially with the EdTPA rubrics. If you really want your classmates to get into the EdTPA, ask them questions about the rubrics. What are the nuances that make a, a, a response a, a, a three rather than a two or a four rather than three? Stay away from a five, okay? The test assessment people, I, I was trained in, in doing the elementary math. They don't give fives. They very rarely give a five. So concentrate on two, three, and and fours. You really have to average a three. I mean, it's, it's 
you, a slightly less than three, you have to get a 41, which uh, 15 rubrics, 15 times three is 45. So um, you can get a two and three of the rubrics. So, but if you get a two and four of them, then you got to get a four and something. So uh, I would focus on three and four and, and the difference between a three and a two. Um, so that is my spiel on writing reasoning targets. So do it. Um, I will be giving you extensive feedback on your first draft. Um, you'll use these comments to improve your test, which you will again upload in a future discussion board to a different group. I'm going to switch your groups up. So you're going to be taking the revised test, and that's what you're going to use for your three-part analytic summary, which is due on the last uh, day of the session. Um, so you're going to analyze your results. Is it, and that, so if you're just asking easy questions, what are the three tasks of the special ed, ed TPA? I mean, you can get that from the, <laughs> you can get that from the table of contents. Um, you'll find that everyone will get 100 and you won't be able to distinguish. And there's a question that says, what do you need to reteach? What are the students' strengths and weaknesses? You won't be able to tell me because you've only asked easy knowledge type questions. So that's my speech on uh, knowledge and reasoning questions. So you also have a true false quiz this session on absence of bias. You can only take it once naturally. Um, you need to take it on the hard copy first, then go into the quiz discussion board and talk about the ones that you may be unsure about before taking it online. There is one question on the quiz that is ambiguous. And I will give you credit if you got it wrong and send me an email explaining why you think it should be correct. It's only one. Um, so that's it. I'll talk to you all again next week.